Hey there, traders. This is Sam with your E-mini futures market recap for Wednesday, October 23, 2024. It is currently right after 8 a.m. Eastern as I'm watching price in the pre-market session lose a little steam. They're currently down from where they closed yesterday, right below 582. You can see current price right here. So what can we say about the levels on the board today? And where is price likely headed next? Well, remember a few days ago I mentioned that the SPY was given the appearance of making somewhat of a sloppy range that they might constrain price like within? Well, that range is more defined now. And this down sloping trend line in this blue green color here is the top part of that range. I'm talking about this line here. The light blue line, by the way, is simply the close or around the close of yesterday. It's looking like what I would call a triangle consolidation which is fairly straightforward. It's kind of a chart pattern that happens a lot. We'll zoom out and look at where it comes from in a second. This is just the top part of this range, this down sloping blue-green trend line, meaning that the bulls would probably like to push price above this area and get closes of significance above, and that could open the door to higher prices. So where's the lower part of this range? Well, for today, it's around this 581.05 level. So here's this triangle that I'm referring to on the hourly chart. The top one's pretty straightforward. This is the all-time highs currently. And you can see that they have been kind of constrained within this, bouncing off the top of this and the bottom using this little pivot down here back on uh, the 15th of October. But these are only just a couple points. So we can do more with, it, with the bottom line. If I extend this to the left, you can start to see there are other areas that were important that, that would have basically given this level more credence. So if I zoom out and just kind of maybe get a bigger view here, Yes, price is not respecting this 100%, but when you have multiple times that a trend line like this gets hit and respected, especially here is a really good point. They've been below it for quite a while, all the way back in time. What is this? February, March, February or so? They've been below this area, you know, fighting it. There's been a lot of these type of interim triangle ranges and other type of ranges in the meantime. And what they want to do, as you can see, is get above. So basically this is a consolidation. They've been going up. Everything's been very bullish kind of moving sideways for a while. At some point before these trend lines converge, they want to move out of this and go up. That's the normal behavior of this. But where we're at in terms of timing and just location on larger time frames like the weekly chart, monthly chart, wouldn't be surprising if we have some type of pullback at some point sooner than later. So for me, this means that unless price gets above or below that consolidation inside that triangle, they're probably going to go sideways within it for a while. Hopefully we'll get some reactions if and when the spiders hit the extremes of that consolidation, but there's no guarantee that will happen. I'm kind of waiting for like a black swan sort of thing to happen that moves price around a lot, either up or down. Again, they're just in this range at the moment. We'll use these levels per usual today to inform our trades in the E-mini futures, and whatever happens, we'll come back to this chart after the closing bell to discuss any trades. So the plan is to make some money, learn something, and if we give money back to the market, which does happen about 20% of the time, we will hopefully learn something in the process as well. Catch you on the other side. And we're back. It's just after 7.30. They took price down today once they got under the lower trend line of that triangle consolidation pattern we talked about this morning. Those of you who had the levels this morning via email were made aware of that lower trend line and what might happen if the bears were able to get price below. The overall setup was a bullish consolidation, though. But I did say that it was likely sooner than later that a bigger move could happen, and I was betting on a pullback. So it just so happened that the bears were the ones to initiate a pullback today. A little earlier than I expected. So busy day at the office, by the way. I did not, I do not have a recording of the one trade that I was able to take before I was away from my computer for the rest of the day. Hopefully I'll be able to knock out the rest of this recap quickly. First question you probably want the answer to is how would you have traded the levels from the morning, especially since you would have been fighting the interim downward trend most of the day. First of all, it would have been helpful to know ahead of time that once price got below the lower part of this trend line, which is right around 581.05 or so, that the chances were greatly increased that the bears would be in charge of that point and drive price down lower. I've adjusted all the relevant levels with the obligatory five cent buffer toward price. The spiders hit these three levels on their way down, and I'm happy to report that the market respected them well. The first trade was a long position right after 945, after that 15 minute mark when the spiders came back down into, let's make this a little bigger here, back into 581.10. I actually jumped the gun and got in when they were around the level about a minute or so before, bought at the market and pulled a quick base hit very quickly. 
Now, sticking to the rules, you would have entered your trade when they came back down here around 952 or so. They hit that to the penny, by the way. The low was 581.10. So with your five cent buffer, you're able to grab that and you got a base hit right there of four points. So that's your first base hit of the day on the long side of this trade. And this is exactly the kind of precision that we want to see. Clear levels, a disciplined entry, and a predictable outcome. So after about 10 a.m., I was busy for the rest of the day and away from my trading screen, so no more trades for me after this one. But we'll talk about what you could have done or what you should have done if you had the levels from the morning. The next trade would have been set to trigger when the spiders hit 5, 10, 18. That's with the 5 cent buffer again. But they missed it. They missed this entry point. They came up within pennies here a couple times. The low was 580.22. Really, the first time was your was your clue. So that's a classic near miss. It's important to remember that discipline and sticking to the levels is key. Not chasing trades is a fundamental part of that. You can see the level was important the second time they came back down here and bounced when price hit it again. But I just don't like taking trades on the same side of a level once it's been traded once. I'm curious to know if any of you out there who had the levels from this morning did take a long trade here, either there, if you jumped the gun, if you were one of the front runners, or maybe you got it again the second time. Uh, if you did, kudos to you. Let me know if you made money on this. But a recycled trade was possible when the spiders got out of this level. And by the time they got back up to the next one, it had been enough time, more than 20 minutes. So that's a good time to start thinking about taking a recycled trade, this time on the short side. That's pulling price five cent toward price on this side of the trade. So after giving this trade some time to play out, they gave you a base hit when they came down. Official base hit number two in the bag. And you definitely would not want to take another long trade at the 580.18 level the third time they came down. And this is a good example of why. They just sliced right through it. So the final trade was down at 579.25, which was a quick and easy four points more if you were adventurous. Another day with at least 12 points. Not too shabby. I'm going to start out here on the hourly chart before we look at the daily chart here because this is the trend line we had from the morning. And also don't forget that there was some significance back in time of this trend line. They've been below it for most of the time. And so they opened right kind of above it this morning and gave it up pretty quickly. So that was a clue number one that the bears were probably going to be in control and it was probably a destination farther down. In fact, there's a really good reason they bounced here. Maybe we can talk about that later. Well, you know what? I'll just show it to you here. On the hourly chart, it's pretty easy to see. I'll just put a line to about where they found a bottom. 574.50, I think, give or take. Low was 574.42, close enough within, within a nickel here. So just look at this. So price is coming up. They find an area they can't get through. It rejected here, rejected, rejected. The market's starting to tell you there's a, an important area. This is You start to see something here, third time. They're either going to gap above this or slice through. And on this particular day, they got above it. So when they come back down again in the future, which they did several times already, this is an hourly chart, so they bounce several hours here. But when they come back down in the future, this breakout area is likely to provide a reaction in the other on the other side. So this was exactly what happened here. I'm not saying it's going to be a huge jump. It could be. They could go down farther. I'm just pointing out right now that that was the reason they stopped. They had a safety net of a 200-period moving average and probably other breakout areas too now that I'm looking at it. But anyway, so this is the hourly chart. They got below that trend line. On the daily chart, we have this fairly important trend line that I've shown you before, starting from down here. And you can see that they've respected this quite a while. And the expectation is that it would continue to climb this. So the fact that they broke below that kind of smaller uh, triangle consolidation on the hourly chart. So this is something to think about what they've done. It wasn't like they just got below this and spiked back out of it on a daily chart. They got below and closed below. Don't forget in the big picture, the very big picture, everything is very bullish, but it's not common for them to continue climbing like this in the big picture without some type of relief and pullback. On the weekly chart, you know, they could be starting this. Of course, we have a couple more days in the week. Just to point out on the daily chart, we're starting to get some clues. And if I were to drill down to smaller time frames, all the way down to say a 10 minute or a five minute, then you're going to start to see they're starting to give up some important areas. Interesting things could be happening sooner than later. Over on the logs, the first one we're looking at is the play in by the rules log. And here are your two base hits, uh, including the recycle of level three, which I hope that makes sense. You just saw everything. So anyway, 12 ES points, and you can see your profit potentials based on number of even contracts traded at each level. And over here on Sam's trades, one base hit. They did not take the other trades nor the recycle. Four points. No complaints. That's a wrap. If you found today's recap helpful, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Turn on the notifications so you can stay updated and keep getting these. 
recap videos. If you're interested in learning more about this strategy that I use or want to trade these levels alongside me every day, you can find more information in the link below of the website, ticksandtrades.com, for the upcoming daily level subscription and the upcoming trading course. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or thoughts on today's trades. I always appreciate hearing from you. Thanks for watching. See you again tomorrow with new levels and another game plan. Have a great rest of your day.